Let's go. Back up. Welcome to Sports Close Up. Mike Frill, Jim Barger. Jim, today we got a special with dog sledding. And who we got pulling that sled here, Jim? We got Ron Capadlo on the sled with the dogs on a chilly day here in Meadville. Sure is. And uh, dog sledding, uh, you know, is a competitive uh, competition Ron and Kathy are in. It really is. And uh, they've made a lot of news with their performances and with the dogs. And uh, this is going to be an interesting one today. It sure will be. And we'll have them on again. And we're going to be interviewing both of them here in a few minutes. We will. And shortly, and I'll, I'll say this, we might not like this weather, but the dogs love it. <laughs> Yeah, they do. This is their weather, no <laughs> doubt about it. As the dogs will be coming down, I think they're trying to get set to come down. You know, this is a big event in, in states like Alaska. Oh, it is. the Iditarod's the biggest sporting event, you know, out there, and it's, it's very fascinating. And, and like I said, we might not like this weather, but it's perfect here. It's I think they're getting them set to come back. Yeah, here they come. Outside. Here comes Ron with the dogs. Here he comes. Let's get Ron on there. The two nice dogs come right by. There they go. There they go. Look how, look how, uh, he has to steer that, you know? Nice. It looks fun. Yeah, and then it's getting on the heavy snow. Dwayne's down there with the other camera getting him. Oh, they're actually going for this nicely. Okay. So, uh, let's go inside and interview Ron and Kathy. And we're back with Ron, Kathy, and Eric. Jim, three people here to do a lot of sled racing with dogs. Fascinating subject. I'm uh, very excited for this show, and uh, we also have our three friends in front of us as well. <laughs> That's right, three of the dogs that pulled the sled. How, Ron, let me ask you first. When, how did you get interested in this? Uh, I moved out to Meadville three years ago, and okay. one day it was at a pep assembly in the gym, and this one right here comes over and says, hey, I hear you have Huskies. Um, at the time I had two and uh, one lived out here with me and she goes, do you want four more? <laughs> and I did, I did not take her up on that, but uh, right. she said, hey, we're coming out to this one place on Saturday. Why don't you bring Denali and we'll hook them up, see how you like it. And that's how I got into it. The rest is history. Now I have four. So and, now you have uh, four. So she, now so I do have four. Have four. <laughs> so, so how often do you do this uh, dog sled? Um, now that I've, I've been pretty much consistently once or twice a weekend um, going out to, now that it's snowing, to Punderson State Park in Ohio. Um, Where's that located? It's, it's pretty much, it's about an, less than an hour and a half away if you take, I know I usually go 87 out and you run right into it. Okay. Um, I think it's Newberry? It's or, uh, Newberry, right by Chardon, um, Ohio. Okay. Mm -hmm. And they have lots of nice trails there. And uh, I know when we're here I'll Sometimes you might see us running around in Woodcock, or um, I'll go down to some trails outside of Pittsburgh. Nice. Yeah, uh, they, they have to love this weather, I'm sure. It's, it's, you know, we might not like it, but it has to be, <laughs> you know, heaven for them, I'm sure. They, they, they're not, uh, they're not dreading going outside to go to the bathroom. Right? Uh, they were, they were itching to go the other weekend when it was that negative, uh, <laughs> 16 degree wind chill. And we did five miles. <laughs> wow. They, they don't realize how painful it is for you. I'm nope. Sure. <laughs> so, yeah, we put them out. They don't want to come in. So, we, we have to coax them in. Okay, so Kathy, you seem like the one that got this ball rolling here. How did you get involved in this? I've known you for a long time. We always get involved in something. So how did you get involved in this dog sledding? Well, <laughs> Matt, our middle, he always wanted a husky, so... Uh, middle child. Middle child, right. right. We went to uh, out into Atlantic and... Uh, let them pick out a husky and it kind of snowballed for us and I was just on the computer looking at different things with huskies and saw uh, it was actually dry land rigging okay. and I was like oh man Chris look at this and my husband right. look at this and so then we just started snowballing with dogs they had a, a site where you could get a mentor mm -hmm. and I'll tell you what I had we had the best mentors uh, Ron and I 
and Eric, we all belong to the Trail Breakers, which is from Ohio. They took us in uh, our pack and taught us everything we know. So you got this husky. You get on a computer and you start looking around, searching stuff for huskies to do, and you saw this dog sledding. And you talk to your husband, Chris, and you decided this is what I want to do. And knowing Chris, he's always been very supportive. Very supportive. So you decided you wanted to do this. Okay, is this at the same time Ron's here too? Uh, no, I Before. think when uh, we actually brought in a uh, Alaskan husky that okay. ran three Iditarods to train our pack. So you went up to Ohio and you signed up and you got mentored into this thing. Now, did you have to buy a sled and all the gear and all this? Uh, you don't have to buy it at first. They, these people are the nicest people and mushing people. They let you borrow. Mushing like, people? Mushers, yeah. Mushers, okay. They let you like <laughs> borrow equipment, help you out. Uh -huh. Like when uh, we went out to, when Ron first came, my first experience out mushing was, uh, it was dry land. And we went out and I was so tired. You think you get on a, a yeah. rig and they just pull you around no, and you, you do not. Hard, huh? I mean, I was like out and my dogs were tiring. So you have to get off and you're like pushing them, you know, <laughs> running with them. I got back and I passed out on the sidewalk and my mentor was over me and she's like, get up now. First rule is you take care of your dogs first. If you can't do this, this like isn't that. your sport. And yeah. I'm like, I can't get up. <laughs> She's like, get up. I'm like, oh, okay. So, so from then on, Eric, yeah. ask Eric, what's the first rule? Always. And by the way, Eric is your. Always uh, take care of your dogs first. Eric. Eric's our cousin. He's your cousin. And Eric, when did you start getting involved in this? A little around last year, mm -hmm. right? And I did, I would. Me and, my, me and my mom were taking care of the dogs for a weekend and then we really liked it. Mm -hmm. So then she said, why don't you help us with sled dogs? So right. then I helped and then it kind of snowballed from there. So you gotta be one of the few young lads at the middle school that does this. Mm -hmm. There's right? one other uh -huh. in high school. Wow, that's pretty awesome well, right there. One of the uh, English teachers, <coughs> uh, her son Dylan has come out with us to nice. do a little dry land. Uh -huh. But uh, yeah, these I took a what was it your trophy or your sweatshirt over to the middle school and the kids were all like, so they have ah, what's that? So he has competitions and he received the trophy. Correct. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Wow. What was that for? That was for the Fort Custard, Michigan, dry land rig, uh -huh. and I got second place. So what do you have to learn when you're steering these people? Because I saw you steering a little bit outside, Ron, Eric. How long does it take to learn how to properly steer? It doesn't take that long as long as you have something to remember it by. What does that mean? Like something, like a little thing you say in your head before you start. So with me, instead of, I usually say yeehaw, mm -hmm. which is jihaw, and then I just say it backwards, so it's hot G. <laughs> so mm -hmm. you talk about competing in Michigan. Uh, Excuse me, Jim, by the way, you have a new friend there. I do. He's <laughs> <laughs> um, uh, you talked about the park in Ohio. You know what? Are, what's it like in this area? Obviously, you know everyone associates mushing with the Iditarod or you know with Canada. What's what's the competitions like around here? You know where else have you traveled? Uh, where are some other I guess hotbeds for it? Uh, we've done usually. There's two races in the fall down in um, at Cooper's Lake Campground. That's um, close. That's probably okay. the closest one I would say. And uh, and so I know I've gone to. I know that's one thing we're always looking for is trails right around here, and um, but I've gone down to Maryland and Elkton, and uh, there's a nice four-mile course there. Um, I think it might be three, but um, they do a race in New Jersey, and uh, I, that's been canceled for the it's a dryland race, so the snow cancels it, and it <laughs> snowed each time. So um, pretty much. Got to travel a little bit, but um, there's still some trails that for training and going for fun around here. Um, but always looking for new ones. What, uh, what's like, uh, I guess, training and competing are two different things. You know, what's a typical distance that you guys would go in a day? You know, for uh, we'll say a training session. Um, I mean, earlier in the season it's smaller, but um, I know right now in the snow, my three that run, uh, this one here is still too young, but. Uh, 
we're, we're up to a little bit over five miles in the snow, and uh, we've done up to six in dry land. Um, Names. This is Sitka. How old is Sitka? She is approaching seven months. Um, then my other one on the far side, mm -hmm. that's Juno, and she'll be two on Valentine's Day. Is that name death, anything in Alaska? I I'm, I'm have a little theme with my dogs. <laughs> and middle dog And this is Makani. Makani is two. Two? Two. How long did they live to as far as pulling sleds and so how, how and then go up to how many years? Oh man. I, I know some dogs that are eleven that are so still those, pulling. Wow. They don't do the long distance right. they, they do the shorter pulls. That's what um, we'll call them like sp sprint races. Kay. Right. And it, Difference between pulling in the snow and in dry land. What's the difference? I'd say the snow is more difficult. There's, I would say, more traction underneath uh, to get moving. Um, and then I know from my end, steering is one. It's a completely different ball game. I'm still learning um, and shifting your weight on the pulling, pulling the sled a little bit, um, kicking the runners back. But that's that's a big difference there. I think. Dry land's a little bit easier, whereas the snow is more difficult, but I think in a way more fun. This sled to my right here, this is a dry land sled. That's a dry land, right. And you could even practice in a big gym if you had a gym. Well, a little bit. We, you could like run them across. Okay, Typically, when you say dry land, you mean just out on grass? Some uh, are, I know the, the, the place in Maryland that we have the race, um, that one was almost a grass course the entire time. Wow. But a lot of them are packed either, I know the New Jersey one is packed sand, um, dirt paths and things like that. So like a, a cross country race for runners basically. Yeah. Right. Okay, My, let me I, ask you I this. do a lot of, uh, when I go out, I do a lot through Westbury and I've met okay. a lot of people from Westbury mm -hmm. who will stop me and say, hey, can I get oh. a picture? Or, oh, wow. We have a, yeah. a guy named Jim who we stop and see everyone, he loves. Uh, uh, he used to have a Siberian, uh -huh. but um, we stop every once in a while. You got a retirement while. village up at Westbury, and some of the people there are really excited about seeing you and your dogs. Let me let me ask you this, Kathy. When all the dogs are at one place, how do they not like? Do they at, ever attack each other, or are they all friendly with each other? How do you keep them away from the other dogs? Well, when when you're at a race, yeah. you, you tie your dogs off, yeah. right? It's a line that goes, well, a lot of people, they, they have a line that comes from the front of their uh, mm -hmm. dog sledding vans. They have vans, actually, that are made for that. Okay. And they have a line that comes out and hooks back in. And so every, like, three feet, you have a dog hooked up. But, uh, like, a van would be here, a van would be over. So really, the dogs never touch each other. Your dogs may, but not to another team. Okay. Like you're not even allowed to really right. have um, your dogs go to another team's dogs. And okay, that makes sense. All right. Yeah, talking about, I guess, training. Then you said, you know, she's too young to really run right now. Uh, how do you know when it's time that they can, you know, strap them on, they can go? And and is it is there a lot of training with them, or is it kind of like second nature to them? You know, they they feel that strap on and they take off. Um, I'd say there's it's a lot second nature, but I know. I've, I've heard the guidelines of wait for about a year. Okay. Um, I know she'll start up with races next fall, and uh, but I know when I'm out walking around town, I'll purposefully sometimes like make left and right turns, and I'll do the commands for left, um, ha, and then go right, G, and just as we're walking to reinforce that. And yeah. um, but then pretty much, I'm that's my thing was working on keeping them pulling for longer amounts of time, and. Um, I've been experimenting with different things. I've heard of other, like, use the command to just keep going, keep going, keep going. Um, but other times I've just stopped them in their tracks and kind of waited a little bit and then went full steam ahead, and that's been seeming to work a lot. Uh, so trying different things, still learning. A lot of it is like your own style. There's no, like, set, you know, like you have guidelines, but there's really nothing set. Like when, when you're out racing, you see um, different rigs out there. Like I, uh, I have the outlaw rig, but some of the other rigs are homemade, made up type of rigs. It's, it's really for any dog. We've seen all types of dogs pulling. There's uh, one team that has Sammy's. Um, what, what are some of the other ones? Eurohounds are, are big. 
Um, I'm trying to think if there is. It almost looked like a team of standard poodles <laughs> one yeah, time. Yeah, there, there was a Iditarod <laughs> team that, that mm -hmm. uh, ran the I have finished the Iditarod with poodles. <laughs> wow. Let's talk about equipment. I mean, this is the dry run rig here. Right. And then to Jim's left is the one they use on the slot. What else do you have to get? Uh, helmet is good. Definitely. H helmet. Gonna, what kind of helmets do you guys use? Uh, believe it or not, uh, on a depends on the day. I might use a, my softball helmet. It's, uh, oh, I think it's over there. Oh, it's a, yeah, uh, uh, yeah. I use a. I, I, I use, use my skiing softball. and snowboarding helmet. Okay. Okay. So sometimes but. you use this softball eastern helmet. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so and some I have a motorcycle helmet that I also use. What do you use? I just use a standard bicycle helmet. A bicycle helmet. Mm -hmm. What else? The gloves, obviously. Snow gloves. gear. If you're doing mm -hmm. outside in the cold. Usually right? a face mask. Boots? Um, I just wear normal kind of work boots, hiking boots. Got to ask this question because this is an interesting sport to me. How many crashes are there during a race? Is there any tumbling oh. over or whatever? I tumbled once. Um, <laughs> <we're>, <laughs> but I'm still the dogs when that happens. Um, they were fine. They were, we were going on a part um, and there was a head on pass. Um, there was another two dog team coming up the hill and then that's when I was on my rig, and mine's a little bit smaller, and um, I should say a lot smaller. And um, I was going down the hill, and I tried keeping them over to the right as they were storming up the hill, and mine did not listen to the yeah. command there. And I, they cut over to the left, I tried cutting to the right, and then I just rolled. Um, it didn't hurt, though. We got back up and ran the rest of the race, and it was perfectly fine. I actually double fractured my elbow on a training run on a bike. I was on a bike running two dogs. The, uh, our Alaskan Husky that, that uh, came from Alaska and Cato, our first lead dog. Mm -hmm. We were, it was like a week before a race and we were finishing up and I thought oh, I'll just, you know, go down to the curve and somehow my line sucked back into my wheel and I didn't have time to react and it just... Did you get any injury? Know, I double fractured my elbow. So there's injuries during Racing this time, so I've, I've never seen one during a race. No, not during a race. Just yeah. when you were training and so forth. Right. So that could occur. Let's talk about races. Is there a purse if you come in first or second? Is there money involved, trophies involved? What's involved? Um, there's usually always a trophy or a medal of some sort. It depends on a race. I know. Um, I know. I'm a member of the. It's called ISDRA, the International Sled Dog Racing Association, and any race that's sanctioned by them. The, there's a pro class, which all breeds the, typically that's those Euro hounds that are extremely fast, but um, there's also a registered breed class with um, only purebred Huskies, Samoyeds, and Malamutes can race in. And usually those two classes, um, there's a purse to it for those bigger races. Like how much is the purse? They were um, 40 last time, right? It depends yeah, on dep each race has their own set purse of, of what they... Uh, okay. The last race at Cooper's, Ron and I were running for the uh, first and second mm -hmm. purse for... So we, and they just break it up for a second, third place. <laughs> what, how much money does it take? I mean, you have the dogs, you got to maintain the dogs. That's got to be some money. You got to take them to the vet and get their shots and all that. That's money. The equipment costs money. How much money do you guys have invested in this? Uh, <laughs> Kathy's looking over at her husband, Chris. Over here. <laughs> <laughs> I try not to count. But it's, I don't know. It's... You know, some people buy yachts, yeah. some people buy yeah. second homes. Right. We buy huskies. You buy huskies. <laughs> we, 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 and you enjoy it. We obviously. do, yes, yes. You now, when, when we first started uh, out, like I said, a lot of times it's trial and error. Mm -hmm. And uh, Chris and I were trying to figure the whole thing out on sure. our own. And there was some hilarious clips of us, like, <laughs> you know, Remember at the beginning, I was holding the, the dogs for Ron, and you know we we couldn't figure out the you know let it go and step back, and we did the one two three, and Chris let him go, and then my dogs would like you know accidentally run him over, oh. and, you know. But like I said, the one once we got our mentor uh, Don and Phyllis Beesmont from uh, Chardon, it just took off from there. How many? 
hours of Dementor help you? And are they still helping you guys? Oh, they still help us. Mm-hmm. Yeah, we. Uh, the, it was too cold for me to run last weekend. Yeah. I just that negative just. Yeah. But uh, Ron went down and and some of them, they're they're the friendliest people, oh, aren't yeah. they? The, the, our whole group. They're just uh, reach out to anyone starting mushing and and you know we'll educate them, keep helping them. It's gotta be a lot of hot chocolate at these events, I imagine. When it's cold. Hot chocolate coffee. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, uh, conversely, with the dry land, I'm sure that's you know fall, summer. Uh, do you know is it harder to train the dogs, or do you, do you treat them differently when you're running in August? You know how do you change that preparation from August to a race now, say in the snow? You know do they just kind of adapt like that? Nothing really different. That's what I was wondering because this is the first year I've really ran in the snow. Mm. Um, I know. It's, I mean, we usually what's the temperature guideline? Yeah, about 45? it is. Uh, f- uh, anything below above, or 50 below. yeah, anything above 40, you know, you shouldn't Caution. run them. You don't yeah. have any problems with that. No. No. <laughs> <laughs> That's more of a caution for me. Anything below 10. So, like, if, like as we tape this, I think the weekend coming up might be in the 50s. That would be one weekend you don't race. Most likely, it, um, I mean, it depends on well, if we where get it drops. Out, yeah. if you get in the morning, where it's okay. lower. Um, if we can get out there early enough, mm-hmm. like usually a lot of them live around Chardon, sure. so sure. we're traveling probably the right. farthest to right. run. So they get there about 9 o'clock, 10 o'clock in the morning. If we get there that early, it still should be in the 30s, not quite to the 40s, and we'll get a good couple of runs in. Now my only problem is I get lost all the time in the woods. <laughs> like, that would be a problem. <laughs> <laughs> we're uh, we're on a training weekend, and um, uh, Phyllis, our one of our mentors, was like, "Well, you should have passed the the big building on the left." And she was like, "What building?" <laughs> so you know, that's a great point you just bring up, both of you. So you don't see the course before you go. So you're going for the first time on these courses, and you have to make certain turns, and it's probably easy to miss a turn. I know. Um, this was the second weekend in a row that I've gone out to that park mm-hmm. out in Ohio, and um, the first weekend I was I was out there by myself because I was right. the only one. It was that negative wind chill day, and um, I ha- <laughs> there was maps posted around on the trails, but sometimes you're like, okay, where where even right. am I here? But and you're last going pretty good speed too. Last time I um, I really focused on trying to remember where we were going and didn't really make any wrong turns, which was surprising, but. Um, yeah, it was pretty much trial and error at times. Tell us about when it's snowing out and you're racing. When the snow's hitting you and so forth. How difficult is that? We haven't experienced that yet. Oh. We've experienced the rain. Was that us. Oh, that'd be miserable. Well, it, it, I was, was getting, I forgot my. Um, Windshield? Um, I have like kind of like the protective eye gear mm-hmm. and right. I, sometimes my ski mask and um, with goggles, but. Sure. The first day of the one, the really rainy, muddy forgot race. That stuff. Forgot I was getting oh. dirt kicked up into my eyes, oh. my mouth. Hard um, to see too. We saw um, a lot. I was pretty much just. I was wearing similar pants like this. I was just <laughs> brown from all the, the mud, <laughs> head to toe. <laughs> Do you wear goggles then? I don't. Wow. I'm probably low enough to the ground that it just shoots <laughs> over my head. <laughs> uh, Eric, what about you? Have you experienced a race? Go ahead. Jump the in one here. race I did af- after all of it. Luckily, after all the other people did their race, it just started downpouring, and we were stuck in the in our van for like 45 wow. minutes. What was that like? The first time you were actually in a race, you're ready to go. It's okay. I've did the, I've done some practice. I've done some runs. Now it's time to go. Was it any different? You know, how did you uh, you psych yourself up? Did you know you were ready? I mean, before the race, we did extensive hours of training. And it was, it, when I got to the finish, when I got to the starting line, it wasn't that bad. I was a little nervous, but <laughs> during the race, it was pretty much like when you're riding a bike down a hill, which is that rush. Right. It was just mostly that. And then when I got to the finish line, I was thankful that I didn't wreck or anything <laughs> like that. Well, it seems like you're in good hands with the dogs. Uh, it seems like you have a good, very close relationship with the dogs. I'm sure that helps a lot, too, you know. <laughs> It, probably spent a lot of time, you know, training the dogs, getting familiar with the dogs before you, you know, they're, they're pets essentially. So, it, Eric, uh, Eric, and his sister and his mom have they've helped our family out a lot with um, 
our one one son we've had our first grandchild and um that week week uh and they came over <laughs> they came over and watched the dogs you know for us and took them out and like eric said earlier they really got to know the dogs and the dogs are like so fond of eric and uh Sitka was born this summer and eric actually came over and helped deliver the litters and yeah i, I always felt <clears throat> that pets really know if a person's a good person you know, I really did, because sometimes you see a dog come bark at someone a lot, and then they just go up to other people and they lick them or they get around. And I think they can understand or they have this sense about the people. Oh, totally. I guess yeah, this builds right? well for me then, right? Yeah, I think so, too. <laughs> you, know? Yeah. They, you know, he found out you're ditching the pirates, so he's a lot happier about you. Right? <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, Eric, is this something you want to continue to do for a long time? You of course. Think? Of course. It's Why? a really nice sport. First, because my whole life I've loved dogs. Every single dog I've had was a nice dog. Oh. So well, that means then you're I a nice get to, person too. Then <laughs> now I get to run with dogs uh-huh. every single time I run a race. When then after a race, it's cuddles. Tell dogs. tell us about that. What do you do with the dogs when the race is over? They're tired too, right? So, what so do you, what do you do? when the race is over, you pretty much have a few people sometimes help them come in, you go to the van, after you get to the van you hook them all up and then you give them water and everything before you sit down, of course, first. So. Yeah, uh, if you can. Yeah, that's uh, if you can grab a shot back there, that's, here if you hold it. This is some of uh, Eric's first place. You got it. It's okay. This was uh, some of Eric's okay. first race here. This was uh, Eric uh, coming back down. This would be the finish. That was the start. And then Eric talked about the bond, and you can just see, you know, the bond between mm-hmm. Eric and uh, this was a dog, uh, one of our other dogs, Misha. But, uh, just the bond between them two, and and it's just the mutual feelings. It, there's nothing like running running with your dogs even if oh, you're yeah. not racing but just you know out on the trails you know just you the dogs you finish and you just you know it's just it's a ball you got family I, got, yeah. I gotta bring this up i gotta bring up the elephant in the room because it, some people would think that this is cruel to dogs right oh some people think oh you're being cruel to these dogs and making them race explain to people why this isn't cruelty and how much care and love that you give these dogs too, and not just because they're racing, because they're part of your families. I mean, I personally would say just look at their faces after when they're out there, when they're starting, when they're finished. <laughs> Smiles the entire way. The, even when, even when they're supposed to be finished. I know, just two days ago, mine took me on another loop, and I didn't want to go on another loop. <laughs> <laughs> and so. Um, <laughs> But hey, that's how we got our mile <laughs> five on that one. So, um, I mean, they they live for it. And um, I know we always joke because what, two of mine, actually this one here and her father, they hate putting the harness on. But once it's on, it's like, sure. okay, it's on. I love right. this now. Yeah. Right. Um, they just, I mean, they don't like putting a collar over their head. Sure. And so, um, but Nobody I just... <laughs> <laughs> and, and you know when they are... Uh, Happy, our Iditarod finisher, he's to the point where he wants to retire for good and you know when you harness him, he, he really doesn't want to be harnessed and you know that, right? Yeah. Oh, he jumps right <laughs> so out. You, yeah, yeah. yeah, so you know he's done. So he's our happy family pet now. He, he doesn't run, but you so know. So you still keep them when they're done racing. It's not like you just use them for racing. Oh, that's it. Mm-hmm. Yeah, they're part of the family, definitely. Oh. But he, he goes out and he plays with the other dogs. The only thing he doesn't do is he doesn't harness up and go out and run. He just says, see you guys, have a yeah. good race. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. He put in his time. <laughs> yeah. the, the most important part is just knowing your dogs. Mm-hmm. And um, they'll, knowing the signs of when it's, when it's time, they'll let you know if you know them well enough. So um, make sure you're always looking for the little tiny details when they're running to say, okay, I think we got to call it quits or I think we can keep going. Yeah. But, but, but I want, I think uh, an important thing here 
is that they don't have to be Siberian Huskies, Malamutes, Eurohounds. You can actually do this sport with any dog. There's a, um, our, uh, That's I got started, can actually. across, uh, belt where you can hook up, right you can hook up, put a harness, hook the belt on. What's it called? Oh, this can is across. a can across. It's, it's actually for running. Okay. But, I mean, you can walk with it. Mm -hmm. But, you know, you don't, you don't have to get be racing all the time. You know, you can do this for a, a hobby and your dogs enjoy it. Mm -hmm. Like, put the belt on. It gives you hands. If you want to put yours on, Ron, I don't know where mine is right now. I'm sure. But you, you put, put the uh, belt on and you, you hook a line to it. And you can go out. Your hands are free. You know, well, they're on you up. I think they know. <laughs> yeah, they're ready. Yeah. <laughs> Your hands are free. And either put like a carabiner there. Or when I, I'll go around town with this and have two dogs, one dog strapped to this one, one dog strapped to that one, and just go. And, um, when you say go, what are you going? What do you mean you Just go? walking. All right. But, um, you can walk. You can but walk. Also, uh, that's how I got started with my other one and now I still run it it's, there's an event actually in the race is called can across and oh, wow. it's a it's a speed race and yeah. uh, pretty much sprinting depending on I know the one race it was like pretty much sprinting for two miles and um, and that's that's her favorite event she loves that hmm. um, but so you have to be pretty in shape and pretty right. athletic to actually do this as well is it mm -hmm. you know Eric does it take a big toll on your I'm sure it takes a toll on your body after a race or even after a long training session mm -hmm. That's why I have concessions are there. <laughs> you, this is my, probably not a, a most intelligent question, but I've got to ask this. Because of the racing you guys do either dry or on snow, do you eat less before you race as a, I mean... Seriously. Do I eat less or do and the it, dogs it, eat less? No, no, not the dogs, you guys. Um. Well, I'm Italian, <laughs> I eat all the time. <laughs> <laughs> I understand that. <laughs> I know we were, we no, were joking. Uh, if we have a race, you tend to eat a little less because you get all excited about the race? Or? Um, well, I always tell myself, well, I, it's always usually the can across is the last event, and we were always joking because now it's, this was the second year in a row. This, uh, I don't remember the name of the food truck down at Cooper's Lake. They, uh, they came up and they had delicious. Uh, buffalo chicken mac and cheese and I'm like I'm only gonna eat half of it it's one of those mass like big styrofoam <laughs> container it was all gone before the race I don't know how I finished it but um I I, I tell myself I'm not going to but yeah, when you're hungry you're hungry yeah, I guess. exactly well, you'll survive the, how about for the dogs what's the nutrition like you know it's compared to you know Mike and his pets you know how do you feed these because they're athletes they're high that's athletes, a good question. You know, how do you prep them you know game well, day or it, get game day or whatever but. in the summer they don't eat as much but but when they start what are you feeding them? Mine eat um, blue buffalo, and um, but I'll I know That's for a type example of food. That's yeah, a type. and um, I know if on a race day I'll give them a little bit in the morning before the race uh, to get that energy because we usually don't go out. The mm -hmm. usually the six dog teams, the four dog teams go out first, and mm -hmm. um, I usually only run the two dogs and one dog, and so I'll give them a little bit there just to get their bodies moving for the day and. Um, I know the one, my dog, he like, one of them, I can't give too much because he likes to, um, he likes to go number two while running. Oh, yeah. Um, <laughs> every race, and <laughs> doesn't fail. And, but I know after, we'll give them. He goes number two on the flat. <laughs> no, we have to stop. Oh, okay. Some, 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 some teams go okay. mid run in there, uh -huh. but, uh, <laughs> yeah, kind of like the I'm, marathon I'd be, runners. <laughs> I'd be afraid they'd be kicking it back yeah, into really. me. But, um, I know after the race, I, um, they have, I mix this one little, uh, it's almost like a Gatorade for dogs into their water. Um, and they just devour that stuff. And then after they go through that, I'll give them some more food and then it's pretty much resting. But, on yeah, their own. I, I do a different schedule. Do do? Well, first I don't eat in the morning cause I'm not mm -hmm. a morning person, right. but I do drink a lot of coffee. Mm -hmm. But and my dogs don't eat the morning of a race either. They don't drink coffee, do they? No. <laughs> <laughs> no, they're awake. I'm not. <laughs> but then after their first, see, I run a four dog, so mm -hmm. my race is one of the first, first ones runs. coming up. It goes six dog, and they go uh, pro, purebred, recreational. Is there one more class? No, that's all three. three. Yeah, it's pretty much and three for each one. And then it goes six, and then it goes four dogs. And this is typically for dry land with the. Yeah. Because when you get to the snow ones, then you have the 
sometimes you'll see like a 10 dog, but a lot of times like eight dogs, six dogs. So you don't feed your dogs before the race, but after the I race? I don't, correct. Then after, after the, the race, race, they, they uh, yeah, I load them up. What and, are we feeding them? Uh, yeah. For health. For yeah. health, that's a brand. Yeah. yeah. Did, did the, some of the race teams have sponsors? They, the bigger ones, yeah. 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 Mm -hmm. like they have dog sponsors, I mean dog food sponsors, some of them too maybe, or? Just sponsors I like, don't like, I don't know about that. I know some some of the races, the uh, prizes, dog food. Yeah, and I think it was, um, I think it was the Canadian American one at Cooper's. Like they had one of the sponsors was Animate Dog Food, hmm. and um, I was just thinking for you guys, uh, since we have a dog company here in Meville, approach them. Maybe they want to sponsor you. You got to give them their food, and they sponsor you guys. I I don't know. I was just throwing it hmm. out there. I, I'm putting you on the spot. <laughs> <laughs> uh, well, I've never approached them. No, but I mean, you guys might want to think about it or something. I, they might I only learned even, about that. They might not even year. know you guys do this. That's true. I mean, they will now. Now they will. Right. close up. Right. <laughs> you want to sponsor these guys? Get a hold of Ron or Kathy. Right. Both of them teach here at the high school. Mm -hmm. There's. I want to uh, go back to the point of because I really want the sport to. Mm -hmm. I would love to see a race come to Meadville. And yeah, that would be cool. It, it mm -hmm. build up. There's a large Husky base. In is there Meadville. any room where the rec complex is? Because we're always looking for stuff to have at the rec. We were talking about that for a sled race. Um, the cross country course goes across the parking lot. So mm -hmm. unless they can build, build a base enough, of some sort. yeah, snow up. Might that, have to talk to the people. I mean, they're curling now. Right, yeah. I heard that. Yeah, yeah. But you also have to have a, a, list. <laughs> a space that can, uh, you can do turns at like 20 miles an hour, 22. Ah. Some of the dogs, some of the uh, some larger really teams fast. get up to 24, 25 ah. miles an hour. Yeah. So you have people that, when you guys go to the event in Ohio, there's people done this like 5, 10, 15 years, obviously. Oh, More. yeah. Really? <laughs> yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, my, our, our mentor, uh, Don and Phyllis, they, they've done it a long time. As a matter of fact, they helped, or they were with my first race. They came up and gave me a picture of, uh, there was a girl who was legally blind who ran the Iditarod. Wow. Her, Scordosis, I think, Scordosis, Scordosis. So I'm, I'm thinking since when you're blind, your other senses kick in a lot more than her right. feel must have been tremendous, like you were saying, as far as turns and mm -hmm. stuff. And I'm sure she had a great rapport with the dogs as oh, well. Oh, yeah. Yes. Uh, right. Lots, but yeah, lots of trust in them. And yes. I was like, you know, that got me over my fear real quick. I'm like, man, if she can do a thousand miles yeah. on, That's you right. know, and I'm like crying about two, two miles. Two, two. <laughs> but like you said earlier, though, it wears you down when you're doing this, huh? It, you feel tired when you're done with the race, too? A couple um, of races? We've been getting to the point that... Maybe not even physically, but maybe emotionally a little bit too? Um, I mean, you do have the mentally, adrenaline going. I should on. say a mental. Um, like I know, driving a car. I know I always get more nervous when there's areas with head-on passing, and that gets me worked up more, because I know mine aren't good at the pass by a team coming towards you. <laughs> um, right. But, I don't know, I, I know with, for like physically, mine have been much better lately where I haven't had to get off, and they've really been pulling which that's been a big relief <laughs> um but i'm pretty much the adrenaline's still there i sleep well at night yeah. um later on that kicks in but it's just just an awesome time it's fun and uh doing the races traveling as you have uh you talked about you know obviously great base in chardon but across the country i'm sure you know, or in the region i'm sure you've made some relationships oh, with a yeah. lot of all the way people. across oh, into yeah. canada and yeah, that's, that's great. Yeah, uh, you guys think ever going up to Canada to do a race? It's not that I'm far, trying next fall. Imagine. Yeah, there, um, some of our friends do what's called a mail mail run race, mm -hmm. where they simulate the old mail run mm -hmm. up in Canada, and they, they go up there and, and do that. Some of them are training now. Mm -hmm. like Judy you, you might and, do that next year. Right? I don't know about that one, but there's but I mean, uh, some other races. Yeah, Canada. there's a a dry land one up in I think it's Bristol. What about Quebec. upstate New York? Do they have any up there? Like Niagara I'm doing Florida? one in February there, in, okay. the, in Tug Hill. Okay. And uh, I can't remember the distance off the top of my head, but I believe it's around five miles. So um, that's pretty much where we're at for training now. You'll enjoy it because that's probably one of the best states hmm. in the country in New York. Just to try that out. <laughs> Not that you'd be biased or anything. No, no, no. no. I think Jim's made a friend here. I Jim, Jim's going to be doing this pretty soon. You know, <laughs> Jim works up at Allegheny. You might not be representing Allegheny College in this. Right 
<laughs> yeah, she is staring at me. <laughs> um, lost my train of thought. Uh, Kathy always has some extra. Might be an interesting as. Go ahead. Yeah. Um, I was just gonna. Around here, you mentioned about you know a bigger tree. You said Woodcock. You'll do some training at. You know, but somewhere like Pine Tuming, I don't know. I know there's a lot of snowmobiling and stuff up there. But I, I'm just throwing some things hmm. out there. I'm just to look I don't even. That. Yeah. I've I've never we've, looked we've, there. Not up in Erie. We've had some. Uh, Prescott Iowa has a lot. Yeah, a lot of we've, snow now. We've had some yeah. teachers open up their uh, land to us. Lynn nice. and Don Maloney uh -huh. uh, offered if we whenever we wanted to come and right. uh, run dogs on their land, we could barring during the hunting season yeah. <laughs> and uh, Sarah Duncan mm -hmm. Carter also uh, has offered us to run on her land but we're always looking we're always open to uh, open fields and great paths through the woods if anyone so anybody again to. out there that wants to uh, find out more about this or wants to offer their land Ron and Kathy work here at the high school just contact them through the high school yeah. Mm -hmm. We're uh Do you ever go out and demonstrate this to anybody yet? That's what we, we did a fair that we always have demonstrations. Okay. Uh Ron and I have talked about doing the Crawford County Fair be this great. coming year. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Um That's a good idea. We actually. did the uh Geauga fair last okay. year. The Trailbreakers Club did the Geauga fair. Well, I, and it know, was there you, was some pictures there. There was it was the biggest some days they had over a thousand people. Crawford County Field would be a great there. idea. You might know someone that maybe you can talk to somebody on the board. Yeah. You know. <laughs> I mean, not that you know anybody that's a commissioner or anything, but right. if you did, you might be able to get that on. But I think that'd be a great thing at the fair. Uh, right. Well, I was even thinking, you know, that would be a nice place to run a race up there. Yes. It would be in the fall. And, you know, it's never used a lot. No. The fairground. I mean, it's used big for the fair, maybe a couple other events, but then it stays dormant so long. Right. It'd be nice to get a couple more events up there. Yeah. And especially expose the people living in Crawford County and, you know, Mercer County and Erie County about this. Mm -hmm. What this yeah. is all about. Yeah. Um, what does it take to put a race on, though? A uh, lot. <laughs> yeah. Staking, staking out the ground, making sure it's safe first for the dogs mm -hmm. and then, you know, safe for the mushers enough uh, electricity a, a lot of the mushing people will camp out so okay. you have to have yeah. electric hookups well, you got that like yeah like right yeah. You um, have a dry run race out there it wouldn't be bad It'd right be fall, that, yeah. uh, the first one correct that would be a good place to have one yeah out. They are also looking at a few other fair places. Are there venues. people that come and put them on? No, like I say, you want you wanted to run one at the fairgrounds. I'm speaking way ahead of myself, but is there an organization will come in and help put it on? How does that work? Typically, like the sled dog clubs will, okay. um, like how the trail breakers and we they put one on in uh, Cooper's Lake. Mm -hmm. um, so pretty much groups will come together like that and sponsor a race, and um, there's the that cost to enter into the race, so that sure. helps defray the cost and sponsors and whatnot there. So believe it or not, Mike, around here, there's probably, what, about four or five clubs between Cleveland here and Pittsburgh. Four wow. or five dog sledding clubs. Wow. So the interest is there, just kind the of finding a place. The interest is there, you know? mm -hmm. yeah. The, uh, a lot of times, now Ron will go down and, and train with some of the people in Pittsburgh um, you went to, did you go to Moraine State Park? And I haven't gone there. Um, I went to the, um, oh, what's that trail called? The Montour Trail. Mm -hmm. um, on one of the trailheads, there's a area three miles out, three miles back, and um, it's a nice, it's pretty flat, so it's not that taxing. But um, just a quick down and back and different sites for them. Okay, you have two dogs, you said? Two here, I have four total. Yeah, four total. Mm -hmm. You have your sled. How many sleds do you have? Uh, one snow sled, and then I have a rig similar to that, but just a lot smaller. I say you, going, say you want to go on a dry run mm -hmm. with the dogs. So you have to load the four dogs. What kind of vehicle do you have? I have a Jeep Grand Cherokee. And they all and, fit in there? Yep. I put and the, your sled? I put the sled on the roof, or the rig on the roof. Mm -hmm. um, if I'm taking my bike, I'll take the bike and so, put it on the back, and so, then pile in. So how long is it, and Kathy, you can answer this too, how long does it take you guys to get everything ready before you embark on your trip to where you're going? Good hour, good hour and a half, I mean, how much time do you need? Um, I mean, it depends on 
how much where we're going, if it's just a day or if it's for a weekend, um, in terms of packing food right. for the dogs. Right. Um, yeah, say, we, we probably start the night before, Chris and I. Packing he, some stuff in the... Packing. What do you have? Cr Crystal, what do you guys uh, drive with the dogs? Uh, well, we have eight huskies, but uh, usually we run a you guys four. Have a bus, or what do you think? <laughs> <laughs> We're looking for the bus. So what do you have right now that you? <laughs> we have uh, uh, Chrysler Town and Country, okay. Stow and Go. <laughs> so you're packing so everything you can the night before, and then we'll, we'll pack what we can the night before. Okay. If we're ru running the dryland rig, mm -hmm. uh, we have a trailer that comes off the back that okay. Chris takes care of that in the morning, and then or if we're running the sled, he'll take care of putting the sled on in the morning. But most of the equipment mm -hmm. we try to get in the night before. And so, uh, so she a lot does of preparation the, yeah. for this. You just she does the car. same oh. thing with. I have a a box in my trunk that pretty much stays there all the time with all the harnesses, the lines, oh, and that just idea. so it's pretty much always in my trunk, ready right. to go. Um, uh, whenever we need to head out somewhere, and um, I'm gonna get back on camera. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so okay, so yeah. And then when the races are over, and you guys are going back. Same thing. You repack the car and the dogs and mm -hmm. the the dogs. Uh, how are they when you put them in those dog crates some, and so forth? Are they okay? <laughs> Actually, yeah, they my... like it. I think they feel safe in there. Mm -hmm. um, Oh, they sleep a lot on the way home because they're tired from all the oh, yeah. They, they mm -hmm. do. Yeah. On the way down, they bark a lot. Yeah, because they're excited. <laughs> yeah, yeah. They, they are excited. And they know as soon as they get there, like there's, you'll get there and it, it might be 6.30, 7 o'clock in the morning to a race site. And you start to get out and you just hear like 50, do 50 huskies ha howling, you know, all in tune, like. It's just the neatest cool. thing to. Yeah. I'm not sure if the flash drive we got you, the, the Matt that? Phillips, the the uh, video man that mm -hmm. did the race for us, droned it. I'm not sure if wow. he got the howling on That's there. That's pretty neat. They droned the race. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> wow. He did. He was excellent. He mm. he has what? What's the name of Matt's site? The Life is for Enjoying. I, something like that. I, so when they're racing. You guys with the dogs, you know, like horses have little flaps that I'm seeing. They just know where they're going. Dogs, obviously, they don't wear any flaps. Yeah. So when they see a dog ahead of them and another thing, are they like yelling at that dog or going after that dog? So, I know they, they're supposed to listen to the on by command to mm -hmm. just keep going straight ahead. I, What's the command for that? On by. You yell on by? Mm -hmm. So you had to train them. No, you yell on by, on by, so you, on you by. Had, obviously, on you by. had to train the dogs with that command. Mm -hmm. Right. How long did that take? Well, it's still a work in progress. Um, <laughs> Ron and I will do short runs. So one dog wants to get involved oh, with I'm the sorry. mics. There. That's okay. Ron and I will do uh, lo lo short training, and Eric will come over, and and uh, we'll be on our dry land rig, mm -hmm. and uh, either Eric or I will be on the rig, but somebody will have be out front with the dog, and you know do the on by as Ron's going by with his dogs. We'll be going on by, on by, so the dogs know, you know, just a repetitive. Okay. Lots know, of train. repetition. And what, what do you yell for them to, like you want them to stop? Like, whoa. Whoa, just mm -hmm. like the horse. Yep. Well, when I say whoa, my mentor says, there ain't no whoa. No. <laughs> pretty much <laughs> and, hit the brakes. But I you always <laughs> say, yeah, I always say whoa, though. And I like, I think they know. And the other commands? To turn? G or? and haw. G, G is and to the right, haw is to the left. Wow. Uh, hike or hike up is to, let's go, come on, pick it up, or get started. I, I, I wanted to go back to the question that yeah. you said about uh, on the race. Mm -hmm. Again, when Ron and I were on our last race, we were one and two going into the second day. And, and I always like, um, when it starts, you're in the chute. They send you out two minutes later, they send the next team out. So you have that two minute break oh, in between. Okay. So a so few everybody's times, going at the same time. Correct. It's staggered. Dr. It's staggered. Right. So you're. Except for the running can across style, they everybody okay. goes out right. at the same Mad time. Dash. But but I like uh -huh. when uh, my team will at Cooper's. They had this monstrous hill. It, it's like probably three quarters of a mile. It is just <laughs> uphill. Like a like roller coaster. Type and and mm -hmm. I'm always the the first day I was like. <laughs> the first day I had, uh, McConney. 
Josephine, Mishka, and Chance. And Chance could not keep up with my other three. My other three are so powerful. So we're going a little bit slower and go, we hit that hill and I'm like, getting off, running up with them, and I'm like, I can't do this, I can't do this. <laughs> so, second day we start out, and I knew I was in a back, I think I was in third place. Mm -hmm. This second. might have been the, you were second. this was a Canadian-American one that I did, you weren't No, there. I didn't compete against you But, um, so I'm thinking, you know, I'm good, because I dropped Chance, I'm like, sorry Chance, you're not <laughs> running was, today. That was, that was mm -hmm. So, um, anyway, my three, no, because the race I did, I caught oh, yeah, up. That's true. So my three, the guy that was in front of me goes out. I'm waiting. Two minutes later, I go up. Bottom of the hill, I get to catch the guy. So oh, nice. I don't have to get off my rig at all right. going up the hill. And I'm like, I'm okay. You just go. I'll wait till we get to the top of the hill. You know, I was just using my strategy of I am not getting off the rig to like right. push today. So we hit the top of the hill, and mm -hmm. I follow him a little further. He's like, okay, you can pass me now. I'm like, oh, really? I'll like this ride, because I already <laughs> knew I won the, you know, sure. run the race. So right. I didn't have to, like, yeah. he's like, no, really, pass now. I'm like, okay. <laughs> so, but it was, like, so nice just following sure. the other. The dogs will follow each other up the that hill. That is nice. So, yeah. yeah, I tried doing that with That's Ron smart. on the next weekend. She couldn't catch me. I couldn't <laughs> catch him. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Well, yeah. Eric, Kathy, Ron. We want to thank you for spending some time with us here on Sports Close Up. Oh, thank you guys for having us. Dog sled racing. I, I know, yeah. you know not for speaking for Jim and myself, Jim, we learned a lot today. This is, yeah, this is incredible. Fascinating. Great, great show. So, again, hey, we'll be more than happy to, any anytime you want to mm -hmm. do another show on this, okay. we'll be more than happy to. We'll but we really come. appreciate you yeah, guys. Yeah, we got that so. Meadville race going. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> definitely get a meatball race going. We'll definitely come back with another show. For Mike Jim, knows people. He's got connections. <laughs> for Jim Berger, this is Mike Fiorello. Thanks for watching Sports Close-Up on Armstrong. What is up, guys? I'm Matt, and you are watching Life is for Enjoying. Today we're here with the Canadian American Sledders Incorporated's annual dry land dog sled race. So we're at Cooper's Lake uh, Campground uh, near Slippery Rock, Pennsylvania, just north of Pittsburgh. And uh, all of a sudden it cold down. We were worried the temperatures might be too warm, but that is definitely not the case. It is plenty cold today.
Good dog. Hey, 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 hey. Hey!